Okay, perfect. Thank you for coming. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And before I begin, I just want to know how many of you came here because of the title, solely. That's a third. That's good. <laughs> it worked. That's why I did it. Okay. Just a few words about where I come from. As you can hear, I'm, I've got a Danish accent. Accents, if you know that. I'm here together with my colleague Janus, sitting up there. And um, we have a company that spans across America, North America, and Europe. We do network knowledge. We do uh, uh, conferences. We have two conferences, one in Philadelphia, one in, in uh, August in Denmark as well. And we believe, you have all the numbers up there, we believe firmly in one idea, actually. And that is that if you listen to people from all around uh, the world, the digital world, the digital spheres, people working with internet, working with websites, working with apps, if you listen to them and learn from their experience, you will move further than anyone else. So that's the basic idea that we have. So I'm not going to tell you something that I haven't heard before. I'm going to stand on the shoulders on, of a lot of good people. So that's the basic idea. And please, there's a Twitter handle up there. I didn't see anyone tweeting that much today. I saw a couple of good tweets. Do tweet uh, during the presentation as well. OK, I'm going to start, begin somewhere completely different than what you expect, uh, far away from content strategy. Uh, because before I went to, to Switzerland, I said to myself, well, I know Switzerland a lot. It's a lot, a lot. It's, a, it's a straight country, it's correct, it's tidy, it's nice, and people know exactly what to do. Uh, it's a bit like Denmark. I thought, no, no, it has to be different. Then I came up about, uh, I thought about this, this um, quote by Orson Welles, it's very good, actually, because we're in cinema, so maybe you saw The Third Man. Did any, anyone of you see The Third Man with Orson Welles? Tim, you did. Another one? The one. You're the only one. <laughs> You're the only one old enough to have seen it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, but he has this famous quote. You have to read it. So forget your laptop. I love this one. And as Janus told me that brotherly love <laughs> it's something Philadelphian as well. That's a quote from the third man. It says it all. Um, I don't think so. So I wanted to find out something different before I came here. I thought, it cannot be that boring. This is from the 50s or 60s. It has to be different. So I went to Google and said, well, I, do, I need to do some searches on Switzerland to find out what defines Switzerland compared to Denmark. Um, and we all know that life com uh, com uh, consists of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. So that's what I searched for, combined with Switzerland. And I did this search. Now I'm probably in some uh, NSA register right by now. I, I did this search and I have 17 million hits, Switzerland and sex. And did the same in Denmark. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how you look at it, we have less or more sex in Denmark. I'm sure. I think we have less when I look at this. So good for Switzerland. Then I said, so then it's drugs. I have 21 million hits. That's far less than sex. That's good in itself. I think, well, we have less in, in Denmark at least. I'm sure about that. But then we have more drugs. So, <laughs> so you have more sex and less drugs in Switzerland. So you're not that tidy after all. You're a bit more funny, actually. But I thought, rock and roll. I've never heard a Swiss musician. Have you? Some of you, but for those who, kind of, who don't come from, from Switzerland, have you ever heard a Swiss musician? Never. You've probably heard a lot of Danish musicians. That's one up there. Okay, <laughs> good. Okay, I thought rock and roll, Switzerland and rock and roll. That's what I expected. Far, far lesser than I expected, actually. Uh, two million hits. No music in, 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 uh, in Switzerland. I thought, no, we're going to show them Denmark. We're going to show them. I did this one. <laughs> So it turns out that Denmark is far less exciting than Switzerland, so that's good for you. <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay, let's go to content strategy. Let's, let's do, um, that, that was a, a little detour, I'll get back to that later on. Because um, this phrase, content is king, how many of, of you have heard that before? That's almost everyone, content is king. Um, and how many agree with that? Four, five, six, seven, eight, a third maybe. Um, don't worry, <laughs> I, won't, I won't register you anywhere. I won't write your names down. Um, remember to do that, Jan, okay? <laughs> write them down. But it's wrong. Content isn't king. It's actually wrong. 
It's a, it's a statement that doesn't fit reality. I believe that that content is a servant, uh, but it behaves like a king. And that's, that's a big problem with content and content strategy. You have the word content strategy as if they are aligned at the same level, they are not. Should be tactics. But somehow content and content strategy has gotten all the attention, all the hype. Um, but I wouldn't do it, uh, I wouldn't do content for content's sake. And that's what we do, a lot of us. So that's the problem. That's the main problem. I got a tweet for you. I'm sorry, Tim, I didn't, I didn't copy it from you, but I heard you did it in Philadelphia as well. Put a tweet up there. You can tweet it. Go ahead. You got your computer in front of you. <laughs> but content is not a king. It's a bad reality TV show. My colleague told me this morning I had another idea. I had a North Korean dictator who told me, no, it's a bad reality TV show. Because the feeling is that you get more and more and more uh, of bad reality TV shows and you cannot turn it off. You cannot skip it. It keeps going. Bad content. So what I'm going to tell you today is that content is broken. Content as we know it is broken. It doesn't work. Uh, and I'm going to show you, and as I mentioned from Tim, I see. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> content is broken. And by that, I mean I have three reasons to show that the why content is broken doesn't work. You can probably find more than three reasons, but three basic and very good reasons to show that, that content is broken. Um, the one is the first. The first one is this one. You have content without a reason. Now, remember the first slides I showed you on Switzerland on sex, drugs, uh, drugs and rock and roll? That's content without a reason. That's just something I put in. I did it because um, I could, and it was fun, and I liked it, and had a good feeling it would be good received. That's how we do a lot of content. We do it online, we do it on the internet, we do it on apps, we do it all, all channels. We put content, I have a good feeling, and I can. And it sounds fun, let's do that. So that's the main, or the first of three reasons to why content doesn't work. Um, that we use it without a reason. We don't have an idea why we do, we just do it. Do you recognize that reason? Some of you? Do some of you publish web content without thinking why I am doing this? No one, that's a beautiful. That's why I'm impressive. <laughs> okay, just gonna put away the mentions there. Okay, the second reason we have is a content explosion. I tested it yesterday that it was livestats.com or something like that, that at the moment we have almost one billion websites, confirmed websites, that is. One billion websites, almost, it's close to. Uh, and we have 10 new websites every second. Every second there's, a new web, uh, there's 10 new websites. And then imagine that on every website in itself, you have all the uh, different channels as well, on every website you have maybe 1,000, maybe 10,000 web pages on web, one website. Then you can imagine how big it is. So what happened to less is more, I don't, I don't understand it. That's why the Swiss could go in and, and tidy up a bit. But I think it's, uh, the web is American, although it was invented in, in, Sw in Switzerland, more or less. It's American. Uh, Let's have more content. Bigger, bigger is beautiful, instead of less is more. So that's, uh, that's the second reason that content is broken. There's simply too much content. It explodes all over. Now we have different channels as well. I did mention that. We have, of course, the traditional website. You have, you have the social media. You have uh, apps. You have uh, direct mail. All kinds of different channels where you can explode and use all your content across the channels. That's a problem in itself. The third one is bad decisions. And this is, this is different. I'm not sure you heard this before. You probably heard it by some of your colleagues in different co contexts, but not like part of content strategy. But it is important because we as human beings make bad decisions all the time, actually. Um, and we do that as digital professionals as well. I tried to figure out how often we do it. There's, there's a brilliant book called by Daniel Kahneman an American-Israeli um, economist who's written a book called Thinking Fast and Slow. Some of you might know it. He says that more than nine out of 10, not 10, but more than nine out of 10 decisions, we are not aware of what we do. I spoke to one of the guys in the audience in the, in the, the lunch break, and we said that if someone were to, to drop a glass, I would react without thinking. So a lot of the things we do, we don't think. 
And a lot of the things, the decisions we make, we do without thinking for real. We just do it. We have a hunch or an idea, or, uh, uh, just an idea of what works, what doesn't work. So I'll just give you a couple examples of bad decisions. Um, the first one, this is interesting, I need to focus because this is a bit difficult. The first one is this, that the law of small numbers. Um, we go from particular to generalizing. We see one small thing and we think that this is what everyone looks like. This is how it is. If I, I just, earlier on, just five minutes ago, I removed the hair from one of these chairs. And I could imagine that our friend right here is going to say that all veins are like that. That's going to go from detail to generalize and say Danes are like that. Okay? That's what we do. That's what people do. We all do that when we make decisions. Because it's easy. We don't use our brain to say just how it is. Does it make sense? So if we want to make it relevant to a website, if I see a user testing, two people that are testing my new small search box, I put a new small search box down the left hand corner, no one will notice it, but two people did, and it worked for them. So I'm going to say, wow, it worked for them. My idea worked, it was good. Let's do that on all our channels. It's a quick decision, and it's wrong. So the third reason is we do bad decisions. Third reason why content is broken. That's the law of small numbers. That's also it's called anchor, and it's difficult as well. Just going to try to explain this, that we, when we see numbers, let's see we see big numbers before we make a decision, then we tend to have bigger decisions, or bigger ideas. Let me give you a very good example from, from the real world. German judges. They, they did a, um, there was a an, 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 um, survey, or they did a, an, an, what do you call it? They used uh, German judges to, do, to throw a dice before they went into a meeting, when they're going to, to give out a sentence. And the one who had bigger numbers on the dices uh, gave bigger sentences afterwards. This is German, uh, German, it's judges. So they were influenced by how high number they had on the dice compared to what they did afterwards in real life, in the, in the courtroom. This is scary. If they are not able to do it, then how can we be able to do it? So imagine that you are going to, to do something. You look in your analytics and look to see how your content is doing. And you see few numbers because it's so massive. Data is so massive in, in your analytics. There's few numbers. You say, ah, I understand this. These two numbers mean this in general and you make a bad decision. So my advice on that part, on the anchor thing, is that we know we are biased in our minds as human beings and as digital professionals, that we use data instead of intuition and feel. Use data to, serve, to, to focus on a problem and then our knowledge to get wiser. Instead of saying we have this wide analytics deal, we look at it and say what, do I what feels right at the moment. Does it make sense? So, content is broken because we do content without a reason. Well, no one in this room, <laughs> besides you, of course. We do it not for a reason. Maybe you do it for the wrong reason. I'm going to challenge you on that on, in, a, in a minute. Um, and the second point is that we do have a problem with content exploding. One billion websites and it's continuing. It's an ongoing explosion. It's like the Big Bang just continuing uh, and it doesn't work. Once someone will say, well, you can use Google, you can fight it all. But no, it doesn't work because the user is not going to like it. Think about the bad TV show again. And the last one is we make bad, bad decisions. We do bad things in our minds. We decide uh, to save energy, to save thoughts when we do decisions. So we think we know you're right. I think this is what they want. Think back when the last time you talked with a colleague about decision to change something or to buy something new or install a new uh, uh, plugin, it seemed, it seemed right. Did you know it or did you have a feel for it? I'm pretty sure you had the last thing. You had a good feel. That's, that's, that's not good. So you can tweet again if you want to. Uh, <laughs> we need more tweets. I think uh, Isabella from, from uh, Magnolia told me that the best tweet is going to, I'm not sure you have to ask her, it's going to win some, some ticks for next year's conference as well. So you have a chance there. Okay, let's move on then to the, the reason why a third of you came in here. Uh, the ugly, the bad, and the good. What can we do about the problem? We have content is broken, in my view. It's really broken. I'm you know, probably not all agree, but I agree. I think it's, it's broken. Um, 
And we ca I think we have three ways of dealing. Or we are dealing with it at current in three ways. The ugly, you guessed it, the bad, and the good one. And uh, Tim just told me that I changed, uh, someone just told me that I changed the ugly and bad and changed them around, but it doesn't matter. Here it will work. Um, there's an ugly way to do it, there's a bad way, and there's a good way to work with content and content strategy in general. Okay, let's have a look then. The ugly, the ugly content strategist. Uh, sounds good, doesn't it? Um, he or she is usually very easy to spot. You probably know someone. There's no one here, of course, but you probably know someone. It's someone who say that they work professionally with content. They maybe maybe call themselves a content strategist, but they work with it. They have writing skills, very good at communicating. They know uh, how to speak about a target group, a message, and how to to write for for the web or write for an app or write for a channel in general. But they don't do anything serious about content or about publishing. They just do it. It's like, I can write something for the web, I'll do it. Looks good, feels right, isn't good. That's the bad one. That's the, uh, sorry, that's the ugly one. Uh, you produce, you publish, and you don't have a plan of what you're actually doing. You might have a plan, though, but you're not following the plan. You have it in your drawer. Just, one, just a question, how many ugly guys are in here? Okay, <laughs> got two free ugly guys. That's good. I think I'm, I'm among them as well sometimes. Okay, three ugly guys and women. No, okay, bad. The bad one. Now, this is the interesting one of the three because the bad one is the one that realizes it doesn't work. And this is a major step. Um, but it's also the, the one that tries and fails. The one who tries and fails, tries and fails to, to, to make good content, content that works within the organization. This is, this is, I know, in a week, I think from now, there's a conference in Frankfurt about content strategy. It's a yearly conference that goes around the world and it's in Europe this year. And I'm sure if I mentioned this that I'm going to say now, they're going to lynch me, so bear with me. <laughs> I think this is the classic content strategy at the moment. That they think that we need to focus on on the content strategy, content first. This is the guys, the guys that say that um, content first, content is king, content is most important, um, and they never get to what's most important, the strategy, what we need to do with the company, the business of it. So these are nice guys, but they don't really do it right. Any one of those who have a plan, who have a content strategy plan, you know the wheel, have you seen the wheel? Some of you have probably seen the wheel where you go round and round and round. Christine Halverson did a, a beautiful model about content strategy, but it seems in some way to not get the point about the business. So you use a lot of time about looking at your content, but not speaking to management and showing the value of what you're doing. This, these are nice guys. They're not ugly. They're just bad guys in many ways, uh, content strategy-wise, but they're quite good. Nice to be with. The last one, this is the good one. The good content strategist. And uh, there's probably no one in here. If there's someone, please come up here, sit down. This is, this is the special one, uh, the Clint Eastwood of the Western. Um, maybe you met someone briefly some years ago, but the idea is that someone who does content strategy in a good way turns it around. And this is the basic idea. So stop tweeting, just listening for one minute. This is the basic idea. You don't start with content, you finish with content. So you need to turn around this idea, I need to do content first, and I do some my user testing and all the, all the stuff I do. You need to end by doing content. This last thing you do. So the good content strategy is focusing on business first, trying first to define what is we do in this business. And it's not like to say that if you're head of marketing or head of uh, online or head of digital, that you define what business is. You don't. You just find out what the CEO and the board says is the business. That's what you do, you don't define it. So you don't do a strategy, you do a tactic afterwards that follows the strategy. So you find out what's the basic idea of business. We have a, a member and a customer in Denmark, a big, big company that sell pumps. It's very sexy, they sell pumps. We don't do that in Denmark, you found out earlier, right? They sell pumps for all kinds of stuff. I think they're among the two or three biggest pump companies in the world. But they did all kinds of fluffy things. What are, what are we doing? We're doing engagement, we're doing um, branding and stuff. And then he said, no, no, we do one thing, we sell pumps. That's it. It's not sexy, but that's what we do. So he wants to support that, selling pumps. So find out what the business do first. Then when you have done that, then define the digital goals that support the business. 
This is usually where the digital strategy or the content strategy or whatever you call it, it's actually a tactics as I spoke earlier. This is where I define how can I, with digital, support my business or our business. Does it make sense? It's the other way around. I don't start with content. And you need to remember this all the time. When I've done that, then I go and support the user task. And this might, uh, I might do a short explanation. User task is that when we go online, we don't go online to surf or get an experience or get engaged. We go to solve a task. We might get an experience or an engagement, but we go there to solve a task. That's the basic idea. So if you go into a website, buy a cucumber, or whatever we just, uh, our, our, the early uh, presentation, you go there to solve a task. Buy a ticket, download some material, uh, find a, a contact person, uh, see a program for today's, uh, uh, for yesterday's workshop or today's presentation, whatever you do, you go there to solve a task. So you need to understand your user's task and then you need to support them. And this is important because you have a business that says you need to go this way and users want to go that way. So you need to find out the sweet spot in between. You cannot do business only or user only if they're wide apart and you have a basic problem. Then you probably don't have a business. <laughs> so you need to find the sweet spot in between or the common denominator between the user task and the business. Define them, understand them and prioritize them. Some of you probably heard about Jeremy Govan. This is where he excels. Jeremy Govan, the Irish uh, thinker who's got some very good ideas on task management. That's the third step. What's the content? Measure, output. Sounds like a production facility, but you need to measure what you're doing. You're not producing, you're producing output. What you do, you're managing your output on your website or your digital channel. You're measuring it. Uh, you're trying to understand how it works. So you need to measure how does this match. So if I have a certain task, say that um, I have a, I'm from Deutsche Bahn, the German railroad, uh, German rail, and I want uh, our customers or the customers would like to order a ticket. That's it. Just buy a ticket online and get it shipped home. That's, that's probably one of the main tasks I have. So I'll go in and say, I'll measure on that task and see how, how, it, uh, how it works out, how it, uh, how it works in, in, in the system, how, how well it does, and I'll try to do it better. That's the, that's the thing I'll, I'll measure. I'll measure the output, not the content, not the functionality, but the output, which is that the, the user can complete a task. Does it make sense? It's a cinema, I'm trying to engage you. <laughs> Okay, because if you do that, then you get to the final bullet on this one, is that when you've done all that and you are comfortable with that, you have a clear idea of what the business wants, what your, what your digital goals are, what your user's primar uh, primary tasks are, and how you measure all this output, then you put relevant content around and inside and all around your, your, your stuff. That's the idea. So it's, uh, I have to turn, uh, this, is, this is how you do it if you do it right. You turn it around. Any comments on that? Any hate speeches? <laughs> no comment. You, yes, up there, please. Putting story one, you put a use. Yes. Yes, I would do that when I go to the, the, the third bullet, or the third point here, support user task. First I will find out what do the users like to do on my website, or on my web channels, or digital channels. What do they want to do? I'll find out how many, there may be 80 things they like to do. You have the long tail, right? All the speciality stuff they like to do, and then you have the long neck. Things that a few like to do, or uh, most people like to do, maybe five, eight things uh, that, say, 50% of all your visitors would like to do. I'll look at them and then I'll try to find out if they want to sign up for a membership or buy a ticket or order something online or um, download something. Then say, if these are the top tasks, then I'll go in and test them, their user journey. How do they go from A to Z? All the way, all the way through uh, until they have ordered or completed the task. And try to be wise on that one. Then I'll go to the measure, the output, and see how to make it better. That's where A and B testing comes in. I can do it better that way. Sorry, I mean, it's difficult. Um, yes. Partly, I, I, I would say it's, it's further down. You need to understand the business first. 
I'm not sure everyone, not even this room, understands perfectly what the business in our own company are, is, what the business is. And then I would like to, to, to find out how can I do that, how can I support that in digital. Say that, um, I've, take the Deutsche Bahn, the German Rail again. I know that part of their, their, their overall business is to sell tickets. It's basic, right? Transport people from A to B as well. So I like to support that with my digital goals. That could be to make it easier to, f to order a ticket when they're on the train or to find out uh, another destination if there's a delay or whatever. To support that with digital so people can have a good e experience. And then I'll find out what, people, what the users would like to have. And I'll combine them in what I, combine in what I call this, this sweet spot and then try to find a user story or user journey that makes me wiser. Not just a feeling what I do, but makes me wiser. And then measure that. A and B and testing again and again. That's the idea. But it's, it's, it's typical. You quickly to a user, user journey or to the content around the user journey. It's what we all do because that's what we like most. I think that's, that's a classic. Okay, but let's, let's thank you for that one. Let's go back to, to this one. That, this sounds American, I know. <laughs> it sounds very American. But America has done a lot of good things, including a good movie. You have a choice. I think actually the movie is European, right? Yeah. I th Italian. Italian, okay. Italian and German, maybe. Um, I think you have a choice. You have a choice if you want to be an, an, an content strategist. And someone told me that this is actually the bad one. It doesn't matter. He looks ugly to me. <laughs> he's, he's a tough guy. Um, you have a choice. You can be the ugly content strategist and say, I, I don't care. I'll just, I have a feeling I'll just keep working the way I've done always. The problem is that if you do that, um, at some point, you're, not, you're going to get, uh, get removed from what you do because you're not professional enough. This is like in, in, our, in our professional field, digital field, there's still a lot of amateurs because it's a new field. And it's just a question of time before the bad ones are being thrown out or put away. So you need to evolve all the time. That's the idea. So would you like Lee Van Cleef or the, the Yockley, I call him here, uh, continue doing what we've done all the time, putting content, just have an idea how it works, putting content online. Um, no one really understands why you do it, not even you. Your role will diminish and, and your power and influence will wane and you will disappear at some point. You will not be able to do what you do today. That's one part of it, being the ugly. So it's bad content, but it's all your own, own career you need to, to look at when you do it. And this one, who's actually the, the ugly and not just the bad, but he looks bad with his silver tooth. He survived that one, by the way. And I just heard that he died today. Eli Wallach's 94 years old. 98. Wow. Okay, you can be the bad one. That's another choice. You can be the bad one. Probably a lot of you, I'm not sure about you, but a lot of people in our member network groups, um, they are fighting with this. They're really trying to comprehend how can we do this right? How can we do content right? That's a big problem. So they try really hard and try to make plans. They try to start with content, say to management, that top, uh, to, to management that content needs to be first. It's king. It's the most important thing. That's why we have an online presence. But it isn't. That's not why you have an online presence. You have an online presence to support the business. It's not the other way around. Sorry to say that. So they will usually say content first, content is king, nothing without content, but they won't. They will fail eventually if they're not able to prove towards management that this works. They will fail in the content they have. They'll also fail in management. Management will probably say that, well, now you've been here for eight years and you've done content strategy for six years and it's all very nice, and you've been shouting loud for four years, this is very, very important, you say. But now I've got another guy, an engineer who's going to do this digital lab, because he's smarter, he, needs to, he can work out goals, KPIs, and he can make me think that it supports my business when I do digital. So that's the problem, actually, for us working with it. But it's also a problem for our, for our users, because they get content they cannot use. How many of you, just, just a question, how many have been, uh, you have been to a, a content, a website, Recently, we thought, I cannot find what I'm looking for. I cannot be just one. Oh, that's more than half. Perfect. <laughs> now you know what I mean. That's where they excel. People that either do the, the ugly part, they just put stuff in on the website and have an idea, or people that put stuff in and really fight to do it, but they do it the wrong way, way around. You can be this guy, the good one, the mysterious stranger. He knows that we do make bad, mistake, uh, bad decisions. Our decisions are biased. We think we know all things we do, and we are very logical about what we do. But a lot of things we do, we don't think about. We just do them because we used to do it. 
or we save brain power. It sounds terrible. A lot of things you do actually is not a clear idea, of, it's not a decision you have done, it's just something you do. Imagine how you got up this morning. Maybe not this morning if you work in a hotel, but if you got up last week at your own home, what you did until you left home. You probably didn't think about that, did you? You did all the usual stuff you always do. You used to it. You save brain power all the time. He knows that's how it works, so he focuses when he makes decisions. He says, okay, I'm going to change something on the website now. Content, functionality, whatever, I'm going to change. Do I have data that shows this is the right thing to do? I'm not just looking at two things, two small tests that shows it and does it do it because I feel right, but because data shows it. So he zooms in, he uses data to zoom in and he, use, he uses his, his own quality or his own ideas to, to make it perfect. So he, he does that and then he focuses on business and users first. That's how he figures out to get, to get supporting content on the website. Make sense? We're sitting in a cinema. The, the sound goes easy that way, not the other way around. Okay, it's very quiet down here. Okay, but that's the good way to do it, to focus on the business first and then finish with the content. And this is what, what we do very well, but we, we just begin with the content and do that well. That's not good enough. So you need to do that way. And by the way, I need to say that then. If you finish by saying, okay, we have this business, we have these... Uh, a digital a goals, we have this user task, and we have this output we have to measure, and this content would support it. Then the next question, I didn't put it in here, but the next question will be, which CMS will support that? So you can look in and say, is it Magnolia or not? That's up to you to find out. Does, do they support the way you work? I cannot answer that question. You'll have to do that. I even have a question here now. Uh, a tweet, sorry. So now we went that content strategy can go from bad Reality TV to uh, a Swiss, a Swiss army knife. Sounds very good. I didn't know we were going to get a Swiss army knife this morning. <laughs> it's a very good touch. Um, we can do that, but you need to turn it around. You need to turn around how we understand content and never begin with content. You know, I've, I've been sitting in many a workshop, many a meeting discussing digital strategy, and among leaders, just uh, not just head of something, but also the main, the main, uh, uh, the top manager, and within five, maybe ten minutes. And this is almost every time. Within five, ten minutes, everyone's discussing technique, CMS, integration, things that are interesting, Facebook. They forget strategy. This is what we do because we, we don't want to do the hard decisions, the hard um, choices up front. So with that, I'll leave you. And if you have any questions, please, please shoot and try to rip it all apart. It's up to you. Thank you. Doot.